can see the I can see the place of light. Now. Well, we were reminiscing, all right. Uh, I said, Brother Dave, remember I saw uh, asking you about these, uh, these uh, cardboard boats that float. I said, Cardboard don't float. You must get out of your mind. Cardboard floating? Well, I was pretty surprised <laughs> that cardboard would float. And not only would it float, but it holds people. <laughs> I wasn't getting in any of them. I don't like it. I know better. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, these uh, cabinet inspectors. Man, I was thinking to myself, man, if I was a cabinet inspector, I don't know what I would ask for a bride. Like, you kind of go crazy with that. Maybe some Red Bulls or something. I don't know. Driving. I don't know where to go. They just get sawed up and became two by fours. I thought Brother Martin was in the military. His cabin, his cabin went from way up here when I was here, yeah. all the way down, way down over here. Uh, boy, if I have the mighty out fall. I'm not doing all this. Wow. If they want it, they better earn it. That's right. I'm glad you I think you're on the list now. If you have your Bibles tonight, well, what are you earning? Joshua. <laughs> Thank you for uh, inviting me out to preach. I sure appreciate it. Yeah. I enjoy preaching the word of God. Yeah. Uh, ever since I got saved, uh, I knew God wanted me to preach. Uh, it wasn't very long after I was saved, um, maybe like a week or something like that, God started working on my heart for ministry. And... Uh, it was the craziest experience besides salvation uh, that God got a hold of me in such a way that I couldn't do anything but hide under my sleeping bag, like with a grown man. Because uh, when the presence of the Lord visited me with the uh, option of serving Him, I had no choice but to. I hide myself like that was going to fix anything. Right? It was like Adam. Yeah. Oh, wait, where are you, Adam? Uh, he's hiding. Yeah. Uh, so I uh, I had no choice uh, but to accept God's call for preaching. And, you know, it's been a wonderful experience. It really has. I've been on the side where Satan had me in the ditch. I've been there, and I... I can say, honestly say, that this is the best life that yeah. uh, I can ever even imagine. Whoa, uh, people are craving this kind of life all over the place. They're searching high and they're searching low for a life that makes sense, yeah. a life that right. gives them meaning, Good. a life that has purpose, Boom. a life that has uh, a meaning to God, to somebody. People join clubs all of the time. Uh, thinking that that's going to give them what they need. Yeah. And they do all kinds of things throughout the years trying to get them to, uh, the, for themselves to feel like they have some kind of a meaning, uh, some uh, self-worth, some purpose. Uh, but when God got a hold of me, suddenly I, and I understood it. And God has completely, completely surprised me at every turn. Uh, with just things I would never have thought would have been possible. I'm just thinking about, I just lay up all night uh, thinking about how am I going to solve this or how is this going to happen or where is this money going to come from or what's going to happen, I don't know. Uh, and then finally I can only get some sleep when I say, oh yes, I remember that God is in control and I see yeah. God do some things in my life. I can just leave it there Good. and you know God yeah. does it every yeah. single time. Yes. I just, I can't get over it. Uh, Satan, when you're serving Satan, he will never do that for you. Right. He will never yeah. give you anything that you desire, anything that you need. Yeah. He will 
only gives you things that you will harm you. Judges, or Joshua, excuse me, chapter number 24. Joshua chapter number 24. I love this passage. The Lord used this passage in my life to reveal to me that I was lost. I came to this passage, I read it, and God continued to work on my heart until I've gotten enough of the Word of God in me that God started working on my salvation and that everything that I was believing in was a complete and utter lie yeah. wow. uh, from Satan. Yeah. You see, I was believing in uh, a prayer. I prayed this prayer. I, I did these things. If I did something to get it, yeah. what is that? Well, That's a work. Right. That's a work. I work for my salvation by praying to get it. And I always tell myself, you know what? I'll be okay because I prayed that prayer. That's not salvation. Right. So God used this passage uh, for me. He does things in different ways for many different people. Uh, and everybody's different. Uh, but this particular passage has a lot of meaning for me. Uh, in verse number 14. Let's start there. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve thee the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What a powerful passage. And I say that because if I give you a little background here, the children of Israel are already uh, done wandering in the forest, wandering in the wilderness. Uh, they come to the place where this is where God has them to be. And they've, they've served all this time uh, wondering where this land at, uh, was at that God had for them. And they finally reach this place. Uh, and already uh, Joshua stands up there and gives his final speech to the uh to the children of Israel there on God's behalf. And he tells them uh, everywhere they've been and all of God, what God has done in their life and all the miracles and the miraculous things that they've seen with their own eyes, how that their shoes didn't even wear out for 40 years, clothing, different things, all these miracles that God has done in their life. He begins to describe all those things to them. And described about uh, serving the Lord in this particular passage, talking about uh, <clears throat> uh, if if it seem uh, if you, uh, if you want to serve the Lord, or or are you going to go back? You see, because before the children of Israel used to be slaves in Egypt for 400 years, right. yeah. and they were serving all those Egyptian gods yeah. and all those false uh, gods and all those idols and things like that. They were serving them uh, wholeheartedly, and uh, these were the children of God. They knew who God was. They knew who God is. They knew that they were supposed to be serving God, but that no, they were serving the gods that they were uh, that were there in Egypt. And even throughout their journey through the wilderness, and God was bringing them through, they were still serving their gods. So Joshua gives them one final charge, one final uh, lesson, if you will, one final uh, statement, and not only was he taking them through about how good God is to them, and how good God is, because God didn't have to choose the children of Israel, but he did, out of his mercy. He started showing them all his power, all his, uh, and I read through those, and I just can't believe uh, the things that God did for them. It's just, uh, it's out of this world. It's almost, it's almost like, are you sure that this really happened? But it did. And uh, God, God he, uh, Joshua is telling them all about it. But he makes a very important statement that he says that you can serve those gods that uh, over, were over back there in Egypt. You can serve them if you want to. He says, but as for me and my house, 
we will serve the Lord. Amen. And there's a distinct uh, line drawn right there. He says there's this side. He even says about uh, on the other side uh, over there in wow. Egypt. And then there's this side over here, which is with God. And now from here, you guys are going to choose whether you want to go over there and serve them or whether or not you want to go over here and serve God. He says, you already know what you've been through back over there. You already know uh, how you were treated back over there. You already know that you were a slave over there. You already know that you were in bondage over there. You already know that all those things that happened to you, you already know them. You've been there. You've been living it. You remember it. Uh, Your children know it because you've told them that this is much better life than that you could ever have than anything else. He says, you would want to go back there? and serve those things? He says, I'm not going to do it. That's what he was telling them. I am not going to go back there and serve them because he knew one thing. He knew how good God is. And just as I was talking about this life that I live and that, that I was on that other side, if you will, over there in Egypt, serving Satan, uh, doing the things that Satan wanted me to do, doing the things that I wanted to do, finding myself in the ditch every single day, finding myself with no worth, no purpose, nothing. And then then God found me. I didn't find God. God found me and gave me enough insight, enough uh, faith through the word of God that I was able to understand that I needed salvation. And once I found out who God is, all of a sudden this life was so incredible. I said, how come people don't uh, find this out? Why don't people know about this life? Why don't people, uh, if they just knew the kind of sleep that I was getting, I mean, if I could just bottle this thing up, and I could, I'd be a trillionaire overnight because people are looking for this kind of happiness all over the place. And it's only found through God. Right. It's only found through Christ. Yeah. It's only found by the blood of Jesus. Right. And this particular passage, Joshua is drawing a line in the sand saying, you're either serving uh, this one, which is Egypt, Satan, the world, or you're serving God over here. Right. Yeah. The God that's good. The God yeah. that has all these wonderful things for you. Yeah. And the same goes for you tonight. You know what I notice in this passage? That there's no age limit. And I think that's wonderful for a bunch of teens, right? There's no age limit. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can always say, you know what? I know where God, I know, I I remember trusting in the Lord. I remember uh, salvation. I remember taking that step of faith. But there's no age limit for serving God. Right. 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 You know, <clears throat> there's something happens whenever young people they get out on their own, they get out from underneath their parents. Uh, a lot of you are going to find this out very soon, and suddenly, uh, they don't know what kind of faith they have. They don't know why they should go to church. Yeah. Or they don't know if I should still go to church because my parents aren't dragging me to church. Wow. Or they don't know, maybe I should help out over here in the church or in this classroom or over here. Or maybe I should uh, help out over there. Uh, well, I don't know because my parents aren't telling me to do it. But do you know what Joshua is saying here? He's saying, choose you this day yeah. who you shall serve. Yeah. And that's what I love about it, because it's a general call for everyone, for all Christians, for all people. Even though it was thousands of years ago, it still applies to us today. We can all choose who to serve. We make decisions every single day, don't we? I mean, 
whether I should get on Facebook, whether I should get on this, whether I should download that new app, whether I should get that new game, yeah. whether I should buy that uh, whatever toy over there, or the new Samsung, or the new iPhones, or the new tablets, or the new this, new video games, PS5000, uh, Xbox, 20 billion. You know what I'm talking about? Make decisions all day long. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Can I ask you, if we just stop and add those decisions up, how many decisions are for this side? For the gods of Egypt, for the world, for Satan. How many decisions have we made in just one day? But you know what? It doesn't have to stay that way. We can always make a choice right here, right now. I'm going to choose to serve the Lord. I'm going to start making decisions to serve God. Do you understand that if we do something once, okay, it's fine. But if we keep doing it more than once, now it's a pattern. And you know what? Our minds and our bodies automatically recognize that it's a pattern. And we don't even have to tell ourselves it's a pattern anymore. We just do. So if we're already in this, making all these decisions for Satan and the devil and the world and ourself, which is the same thing, it's a pattern. We don't even know what we're doing. We have to literally stop ourselves saying, you know what? I see what's going on. You know what? This tally sheet's really good. I made that decision today. I made this decision today. Wow, look at all these decisions I've made today. But you know there's no age limits for choosing to serve the Lord. It doesn't matter how old you are, how wise you are, how educated, how rich. Uh, If you come from a good family, poor family, if you're tall, if you're short, if you're young, if you're old, it doesn't matter uh, what's going on. We all have to make a decision. But you know what? We have to make a decision. There has to be a choice. Just like salvation, there had to have been a choice because we were already lost. Salvation, there has to be a choice that we're going to turn from Satan, we're going to turn from our sin, and we're going to choose God. There has to be a choice. Choose you this day. I love it because it could be every day, any day. No age limits. Doesn't matter. And no discrimination at all, according to the passage. But then he says, serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. He says, I don't want you just because you feel guilty, because maybe uh, you see your friends serving. Or maybe your friends did this, or maybe your parents made you do this. He says, I want you to serve me in sincerity and in truth. Yeah. We all know what sincerity means. I don't think I have to stop and explain what that really means. We know whenever we do stuff out of obligation, yeah. oh, they told me, I guess I have to. Oh. I'm going to go clean my cabin. I'm going to need to clean my cabin. That's an obligation. But if we were sincere, our attitudes would be much different, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, we have to clean our cabin. Maybe you don't have to be that happy. All right, we have to clean our cabin. Let's, let's, let's start somewhere, right? Yeah. That's sincerity. I'm sincere. I want our team to win. I want our team to go somewhere. I don't want to be the loser. I'm sincere about this winning stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right? right? Sincerity. Come on. Yeah. God wants our heart. God wants our heart. He wants us to serve Him because we love Him. Because if we really look at what God has done for us, great and mighty things which thou knowest not. If we really stop and think about it, I woke up today, I had some food today, 
I had a cabin I slept in today. Maybe some of you slept in a cabin. <laughs> I had food, shelter, water, clothing. There's some people that don't even have that. Right, right. There's some people that they don't know if they're going to wake up yeah. the next day. Well, I mean, these are just some just basic stuff. Sunshine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, we can really add it up. God is good. But God also did something else. He said his only begotten son. His only begotten son to shed his blood for us. He sent his only begotten son to die for us. I mean, could you imagine that? I know that you don't have any kids. Or at least you shouldn't. <laughs> but some people do. And some people can fathom a little bit of the sacrifice of even just Abraham uh, of offering up a sacrifice, his only son, even though God said, hey, I'm going to make, uh, through your seed, I'm going to make a multitude that you can't even number, as many as the stars there are in heaven, or, or as the sand on the uh, beach. That's how many uh, children you're going to have. And when God told him to sacrifice his son, what could you think uh, uh, Abraham was thinking? Sacrifice my son? I don't know about all that. I don't know if I have that much faith. But Abraham Abraham knew God. Abraham had some faith. He said, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it because you know what? It's a sacrifice. When God sent his son for us, for salvation for us, for give forgiveness of sins for us. I mean that right there. Could you imagine though, just God leaving heaven to come here? I mean, God, immaculate heaven. Can you imagine what heaven looks like and what heaven uh, is, is like? And all these angels serving him. Now he's got to come down here, take the form of a man, oh. live in this filth, cold, hunger, thirst. Just that transition from there to there, that's a big sacrifice. And then he's going to go through all that suffering. Right. All of that suffering for us, for our sins. And not only that, separation from God, God's punishment on him for our sins. I mean, that right there, that's all we, that's all we add up right there. I'd say that God's pretty good. If we just add up five things, I'd say that God's pretty good. Because Satan doesn't even come close to those five things. You could add up every single thing that Satan could do for you tonight. Everything that Satan could do for you for the rest of your life. Times out of five billion and it's still not close. There's no comparison. But God sent his only son. To die on the cross for us. That's how much God loves us. Right? That's why it's a good life. Because there is somebody that loves us. There's people all over today. They don't have families. Even if they do have, have a family, they don't, they don't feel love. And they're looking for love. They join gangs, clubs, all kinds of things. So they can find love. But you want God has love everywhere. I mean, that's why right there, it's the most interesting and the best life I've ever lived. Because there was somebody that loved me. Every day. Every single day. No matter what I did, no matter what kind of uh, sins I committed, they're all forgiven. No matter... Uh, how down and out I felt, no matter how uh, lonely I feel. You know what? I always know one thing. God loves me. God's right there. Talk, I talk to God. God's right there. Wonderful. He'll send a bird over or something. Oh, wonderful. Down and out. He'll send somebody my way. Talk me out of whatever dark hole I was in. Right. I mean, that's God. Yes. Satan doesn't have that for, for you. But we have to choose ourselves. You know, there's two different lives here. And there's two different decisions here. 
and you can't separate one without the other. <coughs> if we choose to go over there and stay with Satan and stay well on the other side of Egypt, there's only one kind of life you can have, and that's misery, bondage, shame. I mean, I could go on all night. But on the other side with God, there's love, hope, peace, like you wouldn't even believe. Security. And a God that's willing to listen to our prayers. No matter where we are, no matter who we are, no matter what we do, always loves us. Right. The message goes out tonight, young people. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. I think that's really a no-brainer for me. I know what's over there. I've been down that road. I know what's at that end. But on this end, I'm still trying to figure out what's at the end. There's unlimited. There's no measures. At the goodness of God. I'd take that over this any day. Any second. No matter how much misery I may go through. I always know the consistency of God. He's going to be there for me no matter what, no matter when. Even if I fail him in so many different ways. Even if I fail him so hard. Even if I I turn my back on him for 10 years. You know what? He's still going to be there waiting for me. That's the goodness of God. And we could probably preach about that all night long. The goodness of God. But we all have to make a choice. Just like we make choices every single day. We all have to make a choice whether or not we're going to serve God. We have to make a choice. Because if we don't, we're going to continue down the path that we're going. If we don't stop and say, you know what? I need something different in my life. I need to make a choice that's different in my life. It's not going to happen. We have to stop and make it happen. And that's why the call goes out. Choose you this day who you will serve. I think that's great. Choose you this day, young people. If I had the choice to make a decision for God at your age, I'd trade everything for it. Because it's it's such a great life. I would trade so many things for it. I, mean, I wish I was, I wish I had a mind that uh, I could serve God and choose the God at your age. But I had to ruin my life for almost 30 years. But you don't have to. You can make a choice. You can make a choice right now. You can make a choice. You don't have to destroy yourself. You don't have to go down there and experience what Satan has. It's nothing. It's nothing in comparison. You have to choose you this day. Make a choice. Make a choice. With every head bowed and right closed. As I look back on my life, young person, I came to a crossroads in my life. And I had to make a choice. Which direction was I going to go? Was I going to go my direction and serve me and what I wanted to do? Or was I going to go God's way and do what God wanted me to do? And just as Brother Dale said, there is no greater life than choosing to serve the Lord. I don't know what God's blessed me with today, with my wife and children and the ministry and all that God's given to me and continues to give to me and any one of those things, if not all of those things, could not have happened if I had not chosen to serve the Lord. 
What's your choice? You had a man stand up here before you tonight who told you, without all the details, that I walked down a particular road for 30 some odd years and I saw the pain and the misery and the heartache and the death and the destruction at the end of that road. And now I've turned around and I've run down to this fork in the road and I'm gonna do everything I can to wave my arms and yell and scream and holler and do everything I can to stop every young person I know from going down that road I went. You know what some of you are gonna do? You're gonna walk by, yeah, well you just couldn't handle it. I can, I can handle it. And you're gonna walk down that road. And for some reason, you think you have to experience it for yourself. But you'll learn from someone who's been there. Amen. From your parents, from others who've been there. Now they run down to stand in front of you and wave their arms and say, no, please do not go that route. You have a much better life. Maybe you're here tonight. There never has been a day where the choice that you've made was to accept Christ as your Savior. And if you were to die tonight or if you were to die...